Hi everyone, my name is Sam Corris, and I direct research for ARC's Autonomous Technology and Robotics Strategy. And I'd like to thank Daniel McGuire, the associate on our team, for his research contributions on our Electric Vehicles Big Ideas section. So let's just dive right in. One thing people were worried about last year with regards to electric vehicle adoption was that supply chain disruptions caused battery prices to increase for the first time in a long time. And now we're seeing that revert back and fall in line with what Wright's Law suggests, which is declining battery costs for every cumulative doubling of production. And another conclusion that we have, and this is partnering with Tasha Keeney on her work on autonomous, which is that if robo-taxi platforms truly proliferate, EVs could account for 95 to 100% of vehicle sales in 2030. And that's due to uh, fewer vehicles needed due to the more miles traveled by a robo-taxi. Uh, if that's not the case, and you know, IHS's prediction for total vehicles sold is true, uh, then we are forecasting that electric vehicle sales will continue to grow uh, at a 33% compound annual rate during the next seven years, from roughly 10 million in 23 uh, to 74 million in 2030. I think it's useful to take a first look and say, what is happening at a high level? Uh, and that is that internal combustion engine vehicle sales peaked in 2017. Uh, and so here you can see that internal combustion engine sales uh, down 2018, 2019, 2020, barely up in 2021. Um, and if you were to strip out hybrids, that is flat to down, down in 2022, uh, and then a 9% year over year growth in 2023, uh, but not anywhere near the peak in 2017. Meanwhile, you've had consistent, although volatile, growth across uh, EVs. And if we look at this next chart here, you can see the adoption curve. And so this looks like the start of a typical S curve in adoption cycle. Uh, and this is global battery electric vehicle sales market share. And you can see we're tipping into the sweet spot again of that 10 to 20% range. Uh, and the surprising thing here is that, you know, if you look at this, you can, we think you can clearly see that EVs are taking share, but at the same time, you've got large traditional automakers pushing back EV plans. You had GM delaying an EV truck, you have VW uh, delaying an EV battery plant, uh, Ford was cutting production of the F-150 Lightning in response to slowing demand. And so we think um, this puts traditional automakers in a precarious spot, and it would not surprise us to see consolidation over the next, we'll say, seven to 10 years uh, in the auto space, particularly looking at traditional automakers who fail to make the shift to electric and autonomous vehicles. Uh, this chart here is looking at Wright's Law as it relates to battery cost declines. Uh, and as I said at the very beginning, one thing that concerned people last year uh, was the fact that battery prices went up for the first time in a long time. Um, but if we look at where they are today, they've actually fallen, fallen back in line with what Wright's Law would suggest. Uh, and that's that batteries fall by roughly 28% for every cumulative doubling in batteries produced. Uh, another interesting thing here is this uh, look at uh, lithium iron phosphate, so that's LFP which is taking share from nickel-rich cells. Uh, and this illustrates kind of the way that battery development has happened and why it's always uh, a bit tricky to uh, rely on, on an industry where they say, oh, nickel's going to be the biggest constraint, so you can't scale batteries, or cobalt's going to be the biggest constraint. Uh, because at least so far, the substitution effect has, has occurred where uh, batteries have developed around that such that there hasn't been a uh, raw material constraint. And so with this chart on the right, you can see global LFP cathode chemistry share of passenger EV sales. And that went from roughly 5% in 2019 to over 40% in 2023. 
Another thing people also talk about uh, is charging times, right? It takes too long to charge an electric vehicle. Um, I just come out and say that I think that's a wrong comparison just off the bat. Uh, and I'd compare it more to going from a dumb phone to a smartphone, right? When the iPhone first came out, uh, people would say, you know, but how often do you have to charge it? My, my cell phone lasts two weeks. Uh, and the reality is if you can charge it every night, it's not that inconvenient. Same thing with an electric vehicle. Uh, if you don't have to go to a gas station and you're just plugging in it in at home every night, then I'd say it's far more convenient. So what we see here is that the time to charge 200 miles of range uh, is continuously decreasing as the cumulative number of electric vehicles are produced. Uh, and this is great from the charging convenience standpoint, uh, but I think it's actually more useful to take that uh, and use that as a proxy for overall performance. And the reason why we think that this is a good metric to do that is because it includes the efficiency, the range, the power of the vehicle. Uh, and so realistically, you see this and you say, OK, you can charge these vehicles faster. But the chart is also uh, indicating that EVs are becoming higher and higher performance over time. Another interesting dynamic that's leading us to believe there's going to be consolidation among traditional automakers is the fact that many EV manufacturers are struggling to scale profitably. And this, I think, is an uh, interesting dynamic here because people saw what Tesla did and they thought that it would be easier to follow because Tesla blazed the trail, when in fact the opposite is happening. So in the absence of a real supply chain, Tesla vertically integrated and pushed ahead. Um, and now that the supply chain has evolved, you know, people just need to reach scale in order to get to profitability. But because the already profitable market leaders um, are at scale and cutting prices, it's creating this chicken and egg problem for traditional automakers. So you need a traditional automaker to really commit to get to scale uh, in order to compete. But if they're not willing to lose some money along the way and just keep pushing it off, they're never going to get to scale to reach that profitability level. A key driver of EV adoption is price parity. So that's an electric vehicle being like for like with a gas powered car, but costing less. And at least in the US, this has already been the case. And I find this, you know, quite shocking because this is something that people have talked about for decades and now it's finally here and there's more doubt about the future of EVs than ever before. And not only are we at price parity, we should continue to see lower and lower priced EVs. And I think the important thing here is if you look at the chart on the right, um, this is roughly the price elasticity of demand curve for the global auto market. And so we actually have updated numbers. So this is uh, a slightly more rounded curve as opposed to as sharp an incline here. But what you can see is that it's quite clear that when you move from that $50,000 MSRP price to that $25,000 price, you're getting a huge uptick in potential demand. And so the fact that the Model Y was the best selling vehicle in that $40,000 to $50,000 range um, should be quite shocking to people and suggest that as battery costs come down and sticker prices of vehicles continue to come down, there's a huge market opportunity uh, to continue to grow adoption of electric vehicles. This ties back to the original point, is that internal combustion engine vehicle sales have peaked, and we think they're going to continue to lose significant share over the next seven years. In this chart, you can see you know, this black and white striped line, this is IHS market forecast for global vehicle sales. And we put it in black and white because these are the vehicle sales we think are at risk if robo taxis pr proliferate. Um, and you can see our EV forecast here as well. One dynamic that we are watching and we think is a real possibility is this death spiral for incumbent automakers. As EVs and used car prices fall, consumers could delay purchases, waiting for even lower prices. And so that's the summary on electric vehicles, why we think that it's uh, going to, why EVs are going to continue to gain share. 
Uh, it is a secular shift, but in a cyclical industry. So I think naturally there will be ups and downs. But from our research, uh, it seems very clear that people are going to prefer better vehicles at lower prices, and those vehicles will be electric.